G'day trendsetters, I'm at my work garden. Work garden, place of work, where I work. Glenvale Villas, and it's Saturday morning, mid-March, and I'm here to start preparing our gardens for the Carnival of Flowers, the Toowoomba, the Chronicle Garden of Flowers competition, which is part of the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers, which runs all of September, spring for us here in the Southern Hemisphere. So the story so far is I've worked here for about eight years and we've entered the carnival, I think six of those years, had numerous second places, which has been good. We had a first place and last year we had a miss all together. We didn't even get on the podium, which was a little bit embarrassing and, and disappointing at the same time. So this year I've decided to go all as, as all out as possible which isn't like we we don't have a huge budget so uh everything's will be done by seeds i'll go through those in a minute soil preparation is basically just adding horse manure fertilizer will be using rooster booster which is just a, a pelletized composted chicken manure and uh i think that's about it what else can I tell you? I'll leave a lot more information or links in the description below if you want to find out more about the Toowoomba Carnival Flowers and the, the Chronicle. The Chronicle is the, the local newspapers and, and geez, 70 odd years ago, um, I think it was just after the war, they just wanted to build a bit of community spirit. So the, the local newspaper decided to run a, a garden competition and uh, because it's a carnival of flowers it is um, strongly based on uh, flowers and springtime and flowers go together like uh, wood and glue maybe anyhow see so over the years I have planted a, a decent background backbone of the garden if you like for spring flowering plants there's lots of I've got may bushes the geez I can't even think of the names of half them but in, over the years I've planted a lot of things and and what all this is for is for the borders and the gaps fill in the gaps and all that sort of stuff and hopefully we'll have a, a whiz bang big show um, a lot of this stuff won't get planted for another month but there is a few here, which is the Larkspur Imperial Rose Queen and the Delphinium Pacific Giant mixes. And there was one more cornflower. No, it can wait. So mainly those two, I'll have to do those today because they'll take, uh, they need a bit more time than the rest. Cornflower, uh, we'll be preparing the garden bed for this today. There's a, a patch, I'll show you, of spider lilies, which aren't all that attractive. I mean, it's a nice enough plant, but it's not all that attractive. I'll be digging them up this morning, adding the cow manure, and uh, starting to prepare that garden bed for the cornflower. Dwarf polka dot mix. Sounds like fun. I actually thought I'd bought some pink paper daisies, but I can't have done. I've got to do another order yet for cinerarias. There's a, I think it's the climbing fig, which is these guys. <coughs> they have cinerarias, so I might see if they've got some paper daisies as well, put them in. So, uh, obviously this is a little bit different than the normal veggie gardener stuff I do, but uh, I thought because I was putting in the effort this year to, to try and get a, a really good show, Maybe I just document it week by week. What I do during my normal week time, then I'll come out on the weekend and I'll we'll just go through what I've done and, and whatever I do. So yeah, um, this is the climbing fig and these are Bellis English Daisy mix. I'll be preparing that bed as well this morning. 
but again, they won't get cleaned until the middle of April. Sweet alyssum, yeah, how can you have a garden, a spring garden without sweet alyssum? They are a great little border plant and fill in little gaps and stuff like that. Uh, Petunia Majestic Snowball. This will be for our front entrance. So I've got these pink ranunculus by seed. Too damn expensive to grow uh, from, from corms. They're only 50 cents each or something. I've got 150 seeds here, so hopefully I'll get a good strike rate out of those. So the, the pink will be the background plant and the white snowball will be a, a border edging plant for our main entrance gardens. Through here, there's uh, a, I've got a whole row of icebergs, iceberg roses. Um, so the, the, the white petunia will pick up the white of the iceberg rose and then the, the pink of the ranunculus should just lift the whole thing. Make quite a nice show. And this is a bonus poppy seeds. Uh, I have to find out more about those. I don't know what I'm doing with them yet. But that's it. So I will go down now the bellus, the uh, English daisy. That's the bed I'll do first. So we'll go down there, I'll show you. Basically it's just adding horse manure and, and digging it in and, and waiting. Cause it'll, if I plant in another four weeks then it's still another six weeks before I actually plant. So that gives me a good 10 weeks to, to uh, prepare the soil and, and get it ready to, uh, to plant in. Hoping that's enough, more than enough time. But anyhow, I almost forgot to mention sweet peas. Um, I planted these last week uh, and they're already started to come up. St. Paddy's Day was yesterday, which is when you normally plant your seeds, but I planted mine a week early. And they will go on the trellis that's behind me here and, and they should make a nice show. I've already added the, the horse manure and the rooster booster to that. Turn it over a couple of times. I'll leave it sit for uh, another week or two and turn it again and that's it. I won't do any more and then we'll plant sweet peas into that. Right. Okay, so this is the bed where the English daisies will go. Um, I'm planting English daisies in here mainly because the English daisy doesn't mind a little bit of shade. I've got this big tree behind me here. It also doesn't, it's not that fussy on soil conditions. So as long as I get some horse manure in here, a bit of fertilizer, get the soil prepared and fluffed up a little bit, it should be right. We've got, uh, like I said, I was saying before, I've already got the background, backbone of the garden in. I've got these geraniums, which have got this lovely pink flower, gorgeous. Um, and they look a bit ratty now, but we've just been through a really hot, dry spell here. Once I get the horse manure in and a bit of water, they'll, uh, they'll come away. I've got this salvia at the back here. If I prune it shortly, then it should flower for me for spring. A um, few little petunias and a few odds and ends. So basically that's time for me now to grab my shovel and wheelbarrow. Start shoveling horse manure. So just a FYI on the horse manure, at the moment I'm quite fortunate to, enough to have one of the resident's friends bring me a, a half a dozen bags of stable horse manure about once a week. The only problem with that is it's quite hot and quite fresh and I can't really throw that straight on the gardens in there because it attracts a lot of flies and it's also a bit on the nose. So I'm also secondly fortunate enough to have this empty paddock next to where I work and I can just empty the bags out here, let it dry out a bit, let it air out before I bung it in the barrow and take it back inside. So it's just about a week sitting on the ground, more than enough. It's, uh, it's fairly dry by now. And there's plenty of, plenty of little horse nuggets in there to go around. Also, as soon as I mentioned to anybody that I'm using stable manure, 
horse racing, because we've got a horse racing up here, so there's lots of bags of it. Um, yeah, as, as soon as I mention horse manure, they go, oh, what about all the oats and uh, weed seeds that come up? I'm really not worried about that. It's just a bit of green manure. I can either just pull it out, leave it sitting on top of the ground and dig it in a bit later on, or just pull it out and put it in the compost. It's, uh, it's all made round to go around. Anyhow, that's just an FYI on the horse manure that I use. That's enough of that silliness. I'm absolutely sweating up a storm here. But I have got this bed dug over. I think it's going to take a few more times yet. Probably another dose of manure. It's a fairly uh, depleted soil. Especially with this tree here, it sucks the absolute living daylights out of the, the soil. So it's going to take a bit more work. I have got I've still got to plant the delphiniums and the larkspurs, so we'll go and do that now. Um, otherwise, the spider lily garden will have to wait till next week. All right, seedlings. All right, we have delphinium Pacific Giants mix. 80 seeds to a depth of five centimeters. So I've already filled my little seedling trays up. Just a good old fashioned store-bought seed raising mix. I just use this, I just use the edge to give me my five millimeters deep. So that's four rows of 20. It's about five. Okay. They're not a, a bad size as far as seeds go, but I want four rows of 20. There's 80 seeds, so two, three, just keep going. Five, six, seven, and just cover them back over. Easy as that, rinse and repeat. Oh, I will have to label them and then I'll take them down and I'll show you the greenhouse, the Larkspur Imperial Rose Queen. Ah, so to a depth of three millimeters, not quite as much as the other ones. Hardy annual, 20 centimeters wide, 120 centimeters tall, part of full sun, that's good to know, moist, well-drained soil. Good luck with that. Maturity, 140 days. I actually planted larkspur last year and then none came up, so I hope I have better luck this year. The delphiniums and these larkspur, there's a garden here that's in between two blocks, uh, two unit blocks. And it, we used to have these big, uh, what do they call them? Big flame trees or bottle trees, some people call them. And uh, we cut them down, but underneath these trees, it was mass planted with agapanthus. And since the trees are gone, the agaplantus has, has ploughed quite well. So I want these, because of the blue and the pink and the blue of the agapanthus, 
and the, the tall tallness of these to really just fill out any gaps that I've got in that garden where all the agapanthus are. I've also got some white daisy cuttings at, at home that I'll have to pot up this weekend, but I want to bring them in and put them in that garden as well. So it'll be quite, hopefully it'll be quite a show. We'll see. I've got a lot of work to do, that's for sure. Okay, welcome to my greenhouse. Mainly full of clivias at the moment, but made a bit of room here for these seedlings. That's about it. That's nearly three and a half hours work for the day. I still have to go and give that garden bed that I turned over and added uh, manure to a really good water. And uh, that's it. Hopefully come back next week with more adventures of the Twomba Carnival of Flowers gardening. I was thinking before, it's actually called, uh, it's after, I think I mentioned earlier on, it's after the newspaper, the Twomba, the Chronicle, was called the Twomba Chronicle, but I think it's just the Chronicle now. So I'm thinking this can be the Chronicles of the Chronicles Garden of Flowers. But it's a competition. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. I was thinking, so it is a garden, it's the Toowoomba region. So there's a, a city garden area, then there's the, the country garden areas. There's a grand champion in the, in the city and there's a grand champion in the country. Unfortunately, because I'm classified as a commercial enterprise, I don't get to be in any of those competitions where I'm in the, in the commercial section and you just up against all the commercial people in the whole country and the whole city area. Um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier on, but yeah, I didn't get a place last year, so I was a bit, uh, bit miffed about that. Clearly I didn't put the effort in, so I only, I got what I deserve. So more effort this year and hopefully and get back up and up, get back up on the podium. Here goes. Yeah, if you're still here, cheers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.